Hey guys, welcome to the part two of the MongoDB crash course. In our previous video, we created our own MongoDB database cluster using the MongoDB Atlas service. Now we can manage our databases from the Atlas web platform itself, but usually it's preferred to be able to visualize the data and make changes to it through an interactive tool using which you can access your databases without having to log in again and again into the Atlas website on the browser. For this very purpose, we'll be exploring MongoDB Compass GUI tool today. As you have tools like Workbench and dBeaver for MySQL databases, similarly, you have Compass for MongoDB. Using this tool, you can view all of your databases and the collections inside them, and also add, edit, and delete the documents stored as data within them. So let's go back to the Atlas dashboard and figure out how we can connect our database to Compass. Here, if you remember, under our database deployment section, there was something called connect. And when we clicked on it, there was an option to connect using MongoDB Compass. Let's click on this. And from here, you'll see that it's providing you with two options that I do not have MongoDB Compass or I have MongoDB Compass. So if you do not have Compass already installed on your system, you can select your operating system and then download the latest version of Compass from the link that's given here. And then after the download is done, install it on your system and then open the Compass service. And all you have to do is connect using this connection string that's provided. And in this connection string, you need to give in the username and the password that we had created for the access rules previously and after the at symbol we have the actual cluster host name for our mongodb cluster so we'll copy the string here open mongodb compass now remember that you need to install it first before using it and here all you have to do is create a new connection in the uri pass the connection string that you just copied also since i'm using an older version of compass i'll navigate to the i have mongodb compass tab and here click on version 1.11 or earlier. So for me, the connection string is a little different, but depending on the version of Compass that's installed on your system, you can pick either one. Now in this connection string, the username and password are required to be present within the string itself. And for the purpose of accessing this Atlas cluster on my local machine, I have created a new user with the name user itself. So what I'll do is I'll copy this entire string paste it here in the console and I need to replace the username with user and the password with the correct password. Now one more thing special about this current user is that this user is temporary and will be deleted within one week. I can go ahead and make the user permanent or change the expiration date but as of now I'll be keeping it one week. So even if any of you in the future try to copy the same string, you will not get access to my Atlas cluster because by that time the user will have expired. So I'll just copy the string here, paste it into the new connection. I'll name this connection something. I'll call it next JS demo. I'll give it some color, save it. And if you open the advanced connection option, you'll just see the various details that were a part of the string. So for example, we are using username password authentication and your username and password can be updated under this particular tab. We have TLS SSL enabled and we are not using any proxy for tunneling. So by default, the value is none. You do not have to change anything here. After you're done pasting the string, just click on connect and you'll see that you're connected to your MongoDB cluster. On the left hand side, it's showing me the names of the three replica sets that are currently being hosted by the MongoDB server. The default port number is 27017 for MongoDB connections. And if I click on databases, I'm seeing all of the sample databases that were generated for us. So let's go ahead and click on one of them. So I'll open sample Airbnb. Under this, we only have one collection, which you can also see on the left window pane as a nested structure. So our sample database sample Airbnb while sample restaurants has two collections. Now if I click on this particular collection, I can see all of the various documents that are present within it. And similar to the UI dashboard of Atlas, you can filter data here too. So for example, if I want to only filter the Airbnb listings, which have more than five bedrooms, I can just say that bedrooms where the filter is greater than 
So GT is short for greater than, GTE is short for greater than or equal to. So we'll select GTE and give the value as five. Let's click on find. And in a search result, we can see that there are total 68 such hotels where the number of bedrooms is greater than or equal to five. And you can also go ahead and further chain more filter criteria. For example, I want to filter by the total number of people a room can accommodate. So I'll give the filter value accommodates. Again, the criteria would be greater than or equal to, let's say 10. And this time, both of these filters will be applied to our search results. So when I click on find, you'll see that our total number of results drop down further to just 53, where the number of bedrooms is greater than five and the accommodates value is also greater than 10. So this was basically it, how you can use MongoDB Compass to connect to your Atlas cluster from your local system. Now you can do everything from the online dashboard too, but I just wanted you to see how similar connection strings will be used further in the project to connect our MongoDB drivers that we'll be installing in our next JS project to connect to the Atlas instance. So this was it for the video. And in our next video, we'll be creating a brand new database where we'll be creating a new collection to store the users of a user management system.